Okay, here we go. Top 10. Top 10. Your favorite part, my favorite part, Drew's favorite part. Yes. So we are just trying to get right to the chase. <laughs> this is Comics Elite. Welcome back or welcome here for the first time. My name is Sean. I'm the owner of Comics Elite. This is Drew. Drew. He's the does a lot of different everythings at Comics Elite. Um, one of our comic experts. Uh, we got it floating around here. Um, we review the top 10. Well, we read. How many did you read this week? 42. 42. I think I had uh, 32, 33-ish. Mm -hmm. You definitely crushed me this week in reading <laughs> comics. I had a little bit more time. Um, we read a crap ton of comics every week that come out. When they come out on Tuesday, we spend all day Tuesday reading comics. All day. And then we break them all down, and we record the video, and we upload it, and then we go home, and we go to bed, and then we get up yes. the next day to live our normal lives. So these are our top 10. We just did a video. Uh, it's on the channel. Subscribe to the channel, please. Um, and we do giveaways of cool stuff. I'm giving away my top 10 picks this week and Drew's top 10 picks this week. Whoa. It's a double whammy. You're going to get both of our top mm -hmm. 10 picks this week. In order to win, you have to do one simple thing. Well, three simple things. Duh. You know the drill. Like the video. Comment your like number. Once you like it, it'll give you a like number. Comment your like number. And then subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss it. We do live giveaways all the time. We go back through our videos. We pull up how many likes there were. We pull up in a randomizer. We do it all live. You can see it. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We just kind of shoot the shoot the shit with everybody. Um, our other video we did is our skip it's and mess. It's like the comics don't even bother reading. We crack on those books, whatever. Um, some of them deserve it. Some <laughs> of them just couldn't make it into our top 10. But these are our top 10. This is it. So we're going to get started right away because we don't want you guys to be here forever. Uh, we're not trying to just waste a bunch of time to get watch hours and all that crap. We're into that. So ready? Let's go. Number let's 10. Number what 10. do you got? I have got black and gold number five. And my number 10, I'm kind of cheating. Mm -hmm. This is King Spawn is my number 10, okay. but it's also kind of my number 11 because I have 11 books. <laughs> I cheated. So I'm going to do. I've got 13 technically. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll <laughs> sneak this in there. So I'll start with King Spawn. I really like King Spawn. It's, uh, wow. It's violent, just like you want it to be. It's bloody. It's gory. It's the Spawn universe. Billy Kincaid is back, but he's not the Billy Kincaid that we think he is. And it's awesome. The story flows very smooth. No complaints about the storyline. It's easy to follow. It's not convoluted. I love King Spawn. It's super good. Wonder Woman, we talked about this last video. Yes, real quick segue. Uh, I'm waiting for a John Constantine black and tan series. You know, <laughs> black and tan. I can see it happening. I can see. I can see. Yeah, that. but Constantine doesn't sell. That, that is true. Yeah, that's true. Same. It's a shame. But anyway, yes, buy it for this first story alone by it's Pierre. So Kamasi. good. I, I swear to God, it is one of those stories. You read this, and I was thinking to myself. They could have made this a whole year storyline of Wonder Woman going through the different levels of hell trying to save her friend. I, I would have read it. Yes, it, I would have bought the shit out of it. Every variant, I would have loved it. She changes as she goes lower through the yes, levels. Yes. Peter, and, Peter, Tomasi, sir, please write that. Please. Write that. Yes. DC, let him write it. Yes. She's she's savage. <laughs> she's angry. She's pissed off. She's yep. a one track mind. She's tearing <laughs> through the underworld. <laughs> Just it's to a, save her friend. Save it's, her it's friend. Terrific. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. And it's one of the best Wonder Woman stories I've ever read. It's amazing. It's super good. Yes, make this a year-long story. Please. Super good. All right, number nine. I've got Robin, number seven. Okay, I am at you. I got Ice Cream Man. That would have, I, you know what? That would have been my number 14. Okay. Yes. So, Ice Cream Man, this is super <clears throat> unique. Yes, it very reminded, unique. It reminded me more of uh, the other. Haha! Ha. It kind of reminded me. As that. soon as as soon as you start reading it, it says turn it sideways, <laughs> and it's written sideways. There's a couple little cute Easter eggs in there that you'll notice. Uh, I won't tell you what they are. You can figure <laughs> them out for yourself. Um, but it's about this guy descending his family tree, and he's realizing how effed up his family's been, mm -hmm. like through generations <laughs> or generations of just losers, and. It's about like redemption at the end, breaking the cycle. It's really for a yes. change. Some of these ice cream mans and ha -has, yeah. I will lump them together because they're very mm -hmm. similar stories. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I, I got to tell you, I love this series because I never know what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. Am I going to feel super depressed mm -hmm. and like I got hit in the balls with a sledgehammer? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to have like a moment of like, wow, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. what this was. It was a very, wow, that mm -hmm. was really cool. Yeah. If you don't have Haha -ha and Ice Command on your sub list, 
I have not read an issue yet that I have not liked. Is Hot House still coming out? Yes. When's the last issue? I don't remember. Uh, Okay. This is 26, though. Uh, Super good. Okay, talk about Robin, number six. Uh, Number seven. Oh, sorry, number seven. This was a metric shit ton of fun. I had so much fun reading this. Concur. Uh, The fighting, the reveals, the shocking cliffhanger. Big reveals. The deaths. And a first appearance, I think, in this? I think so. I think so. Robin's grandma. Yes. Ross Al Ghul's mother. Yes. I didn't see her anywhere else. I tried to do a Google Mm -hmm. search. She wasn't around. Yeah. Yeah. So this has key factor. Yeah. Did I just say key factor? I said key factor. But yeah, uh, my number nine, Robin number seven, a lot of fun. You cannot go wrong with this comic. Oh, I forgot to mention that. So for Spawn, the little boy that's pivotal to this story... (laughs) I believe he may have some staying power because he's not going anywhere. Hmm. He's very prominent, especially at the end of this story. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think his first appearance is an issue number uh, one when he gets Mm -hmm. killed, if I'm not mistaken. But I would get all three of these, one, two, three, of Spawn, King Spawn. There's a huge key factor there. Um, you never know where the spawn universe is going to go. So that's true. It's it's worth the literally the three dollars to pick it up. This is I'm sorry, yeah, three dollars still two ninety nine. It's worth the three bucks. So okay, next. So we're on to the Ocho number eight. The Ocho, I got DC Vampire. I got Robin. Hey. So uh, yeah, Robin was great. Everything Drew just said, I loved it. It was fantastic, fun reveals. Pretty sure it's a key. Um. And I can't wait for the next one. That's how it wraps up. I can't mm-hmm. wait for it. The fight with Flatline is really cool. Yes, it is. Uh, the island is revealed. All the secrets are revealed. I just loved it. It's so much fun. Mm-hmm. Okay, talk about vampires. Yeah, this is one I was not expecting to have as much fun as I did when I was reading this. Uh, this is the Matina cover you picked. Correct. Uh, so, I Vampire. He makes an appearance in this. He's uh, And he goes to the Justice League for help. Doesn't go as planned. Nope. And all I'm going to say is, if you don't like the Wonder Twins, you're going to love this. <laughs> all I'm going to say. The interior art is interesting. It's not my, would not, would not have been my choice. I felt like it was good for the comic. It, okay. It flowed good for the comic. I, I, I was not complaining about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it, it wasn't bad. It's just interesting. But I, yeah, I, but anyway, regardless, it is a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, you cannot go wrong with this. It I mean, is, Tom yeah. Taylor <laughs> writes the, the, the dystopian stories. Oh, no. This is Rosenberg. Oh. This tying in Rosenberg. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's uh Tinian. Sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and Rosenberg. Before, yeah. Yeah. That, boom. That yeah. blew my mind right there. Why did I think that was Tom Taylor? Well, he's doing the dark, the, the, the dark metal thing coming up. Oh, the, steel. The that's steel. right. He's, he's doing, doing steel. steel. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was confused about. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, I'm even more surprised now <laughs> <laughs> for sure. That was Taylor. Uh, I felt like I was reading, a. a, a a Tom Taylor dystopian mm-hmm. universe, everything goes to shit, yeah. uh, deceased type story, mm-hmm. which is great. I mean, man, Tinian and Rose was no, no surprise now. Those two are just so good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, wow, that makes me even happier now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the part with the one, the Wonder Twins, I I laughed out loud. Yeah. I, I loved it. It was great. It's yes, so, it's, it's good. yes, yes. I like to see <laughs> bad things happen to characters that are just bad. <laughs> Uh, number seven? Yeah, seven. I got Wonder Girl. I got Task Force Z, number one. So, yeah, so, yeah, I want to hear ta- Task Force Z. I wasn't a, so I'll start with real quick with Wonder Girl. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. You mentioned this earlier. I yeah. agree. The interior art in this is absolutely stunning. Jolie mm-hmm. Jones, yes. you put so much love into care into the art, and it flows with the story. I really am enjoying the story. I didn't think I would like Wonder Girl, but they gave it to Jolie Jones, and she's doing such a good job of giving this character mm-hmm. roots. She's given her a good background. It's a believable background. Um, she draws her the way a, a Brazilian girl should look, which is fantastic. Good on you for that. She's not shying away from that. The art is beautiful and stunning. I like her uh, the history she's throwing into it. I just I am a fan of this series. And I don't say that lightly. I'm a fan of this series. So Task Force Z, go ahead and hear this, because this was a skip it for me. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. But one another reason why I, I like this is because so these villains are revived against their will. Against their will, they've been revived. And it gets to a point in this when I, I felt I sympathetic guess. toward the villains. I guess because, they are because yeah, there's, there's an agency that's controlling yeah. these villains with scientists who are reviving them okay. against their will. You can tell. I mean, they hint on it a little bit. Yes, they hint, but you see it in the villains where it's like they don't want to be alive. 
at all. You see it. And I'm like, I felt bad for the villains. I'm like, I don't know. This, I, I, feel I, just, ter- I felt terrible for I them. didn't get that. I, I got it about halfway through. You see it and how they're drawn by Eddie Barrows. It's like, this is horrible. I, this is terrible. I didn't get that Bane and Man Bat were were not happy doing what they're doing. Oh, that was no, I will say that was hysterical at the very beginning. You see this get this blown as a hole blown yeah. in the man bat. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. I just I, I I was just like, what's happening? Are who's the zombie here? How did they become zombies? Well, I, they all died during A Day, more or less. Okay. And they've all been revived by this agency. They're given this more or less, you know, re reanimator fluid. I just and, I didn't like it at all. But I, I, I felt I, like they just glossed over all that stuff. And we get to return to Mr. Bloom. We haven't seen him since yeah. New 52. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't too excited. Scott Snyder's great creation. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, but the art by Eddie Burroughs I thought was fantastic. Art and, was good. And what how they drew Jason Todd. There's a scene where you just see his back and yeah. just like that's I, damn I, good. I mean, not to sound too pretentious here, but the use of perspective in here, mm-hmm. the angles, the camera yes. angles mm-hmm. he was using, uh, I really like that. And yeah. and the artist mm-hmm. and the storytelling. I don't so, know how much of that was the writer or the artist, but it was really well well done. So I got more out of this story wise and character wise than you did. And that it's I guarantee if you do read this and you get about to the halfway point, you'll see you there's a sympathetic twist. Or turn, if you will, with the with the characters. Oh, You'll see, it. like, oh my god, this is terrible. What they're I doing? I I I maybe I just expected more out of it. Okay, <laughs> but I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you. I may like number two. I may come yeah. around. We have six. I got Detective Comics ten forty four. Another one I don't like in your top ten. <laughs> so I'll start. Uh, this I, I've been reading this. That would have been in in my so yeah. the wrap up of this story was so good. <laughs> it. It brings back all the the excuse me the slower issues. Issue I think four was really dragging for me. For me, uh, this is a great wrap up. By the way, this is Time Before Time number it's six. Arguably the best art of the whole series. This oh this man, it's it uh, it's just everything with the story, the pacing, the art, <laughs> the the uh, the ending of this comic made me go back and reread the first half of it again. Because it's mm-hmm. it's if you remember this guy kind of cyclical yeah, yeah this yeah. guy risked everything to get this mm-hmm. family to 1994 or whatever yeah. it is I think mm-hmm. yeah. he risked everything to get him to 1994 and then we pick up like it feels like five years later ish um, and things haven't gone as planned and oh man the ending is great somebody dies here in a very terrible way. Which was uh, very interesting to yes, me, but yes, I just it is. I did not expect this to be in my top ten, and for me to be raving about it as much as I am, go back, get issue one through six, get the trade when it comes out. This is a very very enjoyable story. You will not be disappointed. It's one of those ones where it, it pays off huge at the end issue, and this one pays off huge. Fantastic mm-hmm. time travel story. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I want this to be a movie. I want this to be a movie. I would watch it. I can see it. Yeah. Okay, talk about this boring ass comic. This was not boring at all. For me, this was a flipping great book. This was a great horror comic this week. This was straight up creepy and tension filled the whole way through between the water with the, the, the little um twist they're putting in with the Gotham water, as well as with you know Mr. Vile. The the vile eggs are still down there in Gotham City. They're yeah. still there. And how it's getting into the water now. And by the end of this, well, and not just that, but Batman is trying to save the mayor. They're both caved off, blocked off by a wall in the sewer. And Batman's trying to figure out how to do it without caving in the whole damn sewer on top of them. But it's a great tension-filled comic. And the art by Dan Mora is fantastic. Art was very good. And so all I'm going to say is with what happens at the end of this with the Gotham water, it's it goes from bad to worse for Gotham. That's all I'm going to say. It's a lot of fun, tension-filled I cannot recommend this enough. And, but skip the backup by Stephanie Phillips. It, she ruins whatever momentum Mariko Tamaki built in the beginning of this comic. It's. I guess that'd be another complaint of mine is it's too damn short. Well, it, well half I, I, of wouldn't, it. I wouldn't say it's too short. It's just it's very fast paced. It's like holy. It's that's what it's yeah. that that tension because it's that right. tension that yeah. It just it, it miss. I'm glad you're so excited about it. I am I ecstatic just, about. I just this. didn't feel it from this one. I didn't feel that. I see everything you're saying. I can see it. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just didn't feel that that passion that you have for it. To me, it felt like because this is all, and this is probably the reason why. If this was a standalone story contained within itself, I probably wouldn't be so hard on it. But this is all under the shadow of Fear State. 
And this is part of the problem with DC is trying to cram too much Batman down our throats. You have this, it's a pretty, it's a really good story. It's a really, really good story. But unfortunately, we're supposed to believe that Batman's on the run from the magistrate and this and this other thing, but he's also trapped underneath with the, it's, no, there's, I, there's I, too much yes. going on with Fear State to make this fit in the continuity of what's happening. I agree. The Fear State banner does not belong at all on top of the Detective no. Comics because it's clearly continuing on from the Detective Comics storyline. Yes. I don't, as far as I remember, there's no Peacekeeper. In there's this at there's, all. there's, there's no there's so, no hint yeah. of anything Fear State in this whatsoever. Even the yes. cover A that has Batman with the scary look on his face, like he's scared, doesn't happen yeah. in the issue. And beyond, this the, is this is honestly more. <laughs> they're, they're doing a disservice to this writer, by to this creative team, by trying to. They're breaking it up into smaller stories. They're putting these this this lackluster backup story into mm -hmm. it to try to drag more life out of it mm -hmm. when it should be its own self-contained story outside of Fear State. Yeah, because what Mirko Tamaki is writing is terrific. It's and, great. But what what Stephanie what Stephanie Phillips is doing in the backup stories, and I compare it to that character Glenn from Talladega Nights, where uh, Ricky Bobby is expressing how great his car is, you know, and Glenn tells this, this stupid story, and uh, Ricky Ricky's like, "Whatever you just said, you just ruined." All right. Yeah. It's yeah. like just Stephanie Phillips. Whatever Mariko just did, you ruined. I right? forgot what the backup story was. Um, that's how much I didn't like the backup story. Oh yeah, with the dude that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, it's a whole throwaway story. It's supposed to be scary, but it's not. No, it is the, I, I I say I cannot recommend the first story enough by Mariko. It is fantastic. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's my problem with it. Is yeah. it shouldn't be with Fear State. No, okay. it shouldn't be. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, moving on. Next one. I will agree with you on that. <laughs> Okay, so I got Deathstroke Inc. number two, and I got Hellcop. Another okay. big old disagreement here. No, it, it wasn't a disagreement. No, okay. it just I guess it, it, it I felt a tad too long for me. But other than that, it, it would have been a top ten. So yeah. I felt I felt like the pacing of this. So there's a 3D <laughs> issue with this if you can find it. I didn't read it in 3D, but I can't wait to put the glasses on and dig into it. Hellcop in 3D. Yeah, after what after some of the the, the landscapes were given, the, the different worlds, it's like you know what this would be kind of interesting in 3D. So this Hellcop, I love this. I was so uh, happy reading this. This is so good. They create a rich, vibrant universe. They explain it without beating us over the head. They explain it to it to us kind of in the background while action is happening within yes. the universe. Mm -hmm. We get a really good intro to the to the two characters, the main the main character, the one really main character, and uh, what's happening in the universe. And then something happens. I'm excited about the next one. I can't recommend Hellcop mm -hmm. enough. It was mm -hmm. super super good. There's a reason why they did so many variants for it. They had mm -hmm. a lot of confidence in it, mm -hmm. which they should have because it's really really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I highly is. advise you guys. Yeah. It's my number mm -hmm. what five I think ish. Yeah, six. Or yeah, for our world, for our world. Okay, go ahead with your task force. Uh, yeah. or, I'm sorry, Des uh, boring. I'm oh, sorry, Deathstroke Incorporated. This was not boring at all. all right, Howard yeah. Porter's art in this is astonishing. Yes, yes, the art this, is very, very good. This is how you illustrate a comic book. Dynamic. He was with Flash for a long time. Was it? Yes, he was. He yes. carried Flash for a long time, and he was art. with uh, Grant Morrison on Justice League. You know, yeah. back in '97. Yeah. Uh, dynamic, bold, action-packed, beautiful colors. Loved it. It is so damn colorful in this. Yeah, high five, whoever that is. Yeah. Uh, a story by Josh Williamson with Cyborg Superman in involving the moon. I, I don't want to spoil anything else. Just know it is a lot of fun and it's action packed. Art is fantastic. You will not have a bad time reading this. Yeah, it's, it. it's a really good wrap up to issue number one. To me, it just felt, I don't know, it just, it's just missing something. I don't know what. Maybe I'm just super finicky this week. I don't know what Could it is. Be. You did, did have a lot to read. <laughs> All right, let's do the next one. Where are we on? Uh, here, one, two, three, four, four, number four. I actually have, yeah, so that was a whole skip. It good, me. I got Batman along Halloween. We have so many disagreements this yes, week. Yes, we do. So, I have Darth Vader. Uh, finally, finally, a story with a little bit of significance. I felt like this is pretty much a wrap up, it's a good, pretty good wrap up to uh, War of the Bounty Hunters. Another one, we've had several wrap ups to it. But this one, it feels like it's really wrapped up. Like we're mm -hmm. getting ready to step into the next universe of uh, what's it, uh, Crimson Dawn, Crimson Tide. There's a new Star Wars series. We're gonna, which we're gonna have a variant for it released oh, this Friday. Exciting. Yes, very, very good. Uh, very excited about it. But uh, this was a really good wrap up to it. 
there's a betrayal. Won't say what happens. Vader is very Vadery in this one. He cuts up a lot of people. He's a super badass, just like you would expect. Just when you think the issue's over, it's not. And he's more of a badass. It talks about why he wanted Han Solo in the first place, what he really wanted, and uh, how the Emperor influences him in his hunt for Luke. So there's some significance there, which is really good to see. Finally. Finally. Um, so go talk about Long Halloween. Long Halloween. For me, this was really good because I kept my expectations low. Because I know it's like when you have a, like a monumental story like Long Halloween, it's like it's hard to duplicate that, especially when, you, when yeah. it's like a one shot. So I knew I'm like, okay, I need, yeah, to, that I need probably, to bring that Earth. That was probably my problem is I had yeah. such high expectations okay. for it. So the, by the end of this, this raises a lot of questions and really makes me wonder where the story is going to go to next because they leave this open ended again. Yeah. And uh, for me, this was very fast paced, emotional, and action packed. Tim Seale's art in this is fantastic. Uh, however, we do see the best and worst of Tim Sale in here because uh, there's moments where it, there's moments where Robin and Batgirl are drawn like I don't know if they're supposed to be twelve or eighteen. I'm like. Yeah, this the kids. That was a yeah, weird little trick yes. or treat moment. Yeah, but like that was a little like, cringy to me they too. Look, they look like they're eighteen, but they're supposed to be twelve. Yeah, 13? that was a little yeah. cringy to me. Uh, other than that, it, it's a solid read and a solid addition to the Long Halloween. I'm trying it, to say I don't have it here. I'll see if I had Long Halloween on my shelf. I don't. Um, I I agree. It's a solid addition mm -hmm. to Long Halloween. Um, yeah, good addition to it. Mm -hmm. Very centered on uh, Two Face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very centered on and Two his, Face and his wife. And like I said. He's like wide open, like, whoa. I just, yeah, okay. I just, I just, man, I was just disappointed in it. Okay, it left me wanting more at the very end. So. Yeah. All right, next. Number three. So this is my cheat here. Go for it. I've got this the spawn triple threat here this week for my the three. Gunslinger spawns is yes. This so looks familiar. <laughs> I got Echo while you open up. I'm talking about Echo Lands. Woo! <laughs> this was this could have been my top. So there's a director's cut of number two out mm -hmm. this week. Uh I'm telling you right now, guys, do yourself a favor. This is only $5. It's super high. This is the contrast. This is why I get so irritated at Marvel sometimes. Their paper quality is such garbage. It's garbage paper they're printing on. It's so clear that someone, this is a glossy cardstock, beautiful cover. Uh, the interior art is, is on thicker paper also. This is the uh, like a director's cut for issue number two. Do yourself a favor and read this. The art is just JH Williams. It's he, just yeah, yeah. it's just stunning. The art mm -hmm. is absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. in here. You will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Issue three. Mm -hmm. The story is it's a fantasy universe. Yeah. Uh filled with it's fantasy mixed with like science and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's and weird. It's, and yeah. it's great. Yes, it's it is. Just, yeah. I, I can't I can't even really describe. <laughs> I, I would do a disservice to try to describe yes. what this is about. Here's the opening splash page. I'll, I'll spoil a little bit. I mean, you're not going to read it, but just look at that art. Yeah. Look at how beautiful this is. And he kind of mixes in the, the, the Kirby elements with this, which is, and it's, which it's, is terrific. It's too, such a issue. unique way to tell a story with a full page sideways printed comic. It's so enjoyable and it's so beautiful. You have to go pick up Echo Lands. It is one of the most unique universes I've ever dove into. You have to get it. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, I'll let you talk about. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna keep this, uh, keep it short and sweet. I'll try to. You cannot go wrong with any of the Spawn books this week. King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn, uh, uh, Regular Spawn. All three are solid, awesome. Yes. You cannot, yeah. So we didn't get our Gunslingers till this week. Correct. Um, we we're when the stores that got caught up mm -hmm. in the paper shortage mm -hmm. thing. We got all our gunslingers in. They're all shipping. Uh, some of you got shipping notification already if you bought them from us on the website. But yeah, I, I forgot to review the gunslinger spawn, but it's fantastic. Yes. And just like <laughs> King Spawn, all the spawns are solid on point. Yeah. Totally agree with you on this one. Yes. And but for me, like, the one that edges out of the three, if I were to pick one, is be gunslinger spawn because I love westerns and uh, I love the second and third stories in gunslinger spawn. Yeah. Was my favorite. The art too is just yes. You got a all the A listers working on it. I love yeah, it. Brett like, Booth on interiors. Yes. yes. It's like holy it. crap. What's even yeah. happening right now? Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. How awesome it is. Yes. Okay. Number three. We're wrapping oh, it up here, guys. The dose. Number oh, two. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. I had an extra one. Okay. <laughs> um. So here I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'll do. Yeah. I'll do number three. Go I ahead. got Moon Knight number four. 
Okay, I have so uh, you didn't like Spider Man at all. No, this week. <laughs> I'm really liking Spider Man. <laughs> um, I'm so hard on Spidey because he's my favorite character. I'm actually <laughs> starting to like. I can't believe I'm going to say these words, and I'm almost afraid Drew's going to hit me when I say this. I'm almost starting to like Ben Riley more as a character than what they've been doing with Peter lately. No, I, I don't. No, I don't fault you for that at all. No, Ben Riley no. is. It's you can. He's so the thing that made Peter Parker so uh, I guess likable or such a popular mm. character was that he was so relatable, right? Well. I, you really, I think, I feel like Peter's lost that. I really could relate to a lot of what Ben Riley is going through now. <laughs> you can empathize with him. Um, he's trying to find his way and he's, he's uh, <coughs> being controlled a little bit. He's trying to do the right thing and he's got forces pulling him in different directions. Uh, and Peter's still dying. Peter's out of the picture. He's laying on the bed dying. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying Spider Man right now. Finally, I'm enjoying mm -hmm. Spider Man. Yeah, go ahead with your Moon Knight. And I'm enjoying Moon Knight as much as you're enjoying Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, first off, in this comic, it's great seeing Tigra being drawn beautiful and sexy again. Yeah, loved it. Uh, two, the one of the big plot points in this it involves finances. Uh, we've seen this in the Batman comics where Bruce Batman lost all, pretty much lost. He's down to down to a millionaire, you know. Whereas Moon Knight, you know, he had his fortune, he has his fortune, but there may be a problem with it in this one. Mm -hmm. But it takes a twist on it at the end as we see Moon Knight being who he is, you know, his role in the grand scheme of things with his religion. It's like, he doesn't need that money. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah. I, that's what I loved about it. You know, it really puts it on his head. It's like, kudos to you. Point, yeah. point to you. And he gets it to the villain. I love it. And there's some great, there's some, the action scenes in this are actually really damn good by the interior artist. He's kind of growing on me. McNevin's cover. That's a beautiful cover. Yes, too. yes it is. Absolutely. You got a lot of glare here, so you can't see it. Yeah. I got a hole at these weird I, angles. I love how each of his covers are so uniquely different. They've all been different in one way or another. Yeah. How he's doing them. Uh, this was fantastic. Strongest recommends. This has been a fantastic series. And uh, I, yeah, you're going to love it. I like how Tiger made fun of him. She calls him by name. He's like, don't, yeah. don't say that in yes. front of my secretary. Terry. She's like, you have a YouTube video produced by you, like <laughs> you're the executive producer of your own YouTube video. And they have, they have a great heart to heart on the on the rooftop, you know, about him. He finally takes off that mask. It's like we haven't seen him without the mask yet. I forgot about that yeah. at all. And it's like, oh yeah. shit, this is great. Okay, so I'm gonna do my number one is gonna be tied because I kind of cheated. Mm. So my mm. number one is gonna be a double whammy. I have American Vampires, which I loved, mm -hmm. and I picked the Comics Elite and Six One Six exclusive cover for it. You uh, did an exclusive for it? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. there's actually three different ones available, two different mm -hmm. ones available. There's a Matina one, and there's this one available mm -hmm. on the website still. I think the cover C might be sold out, mm -hmm. but I think we have trade dresses mm -hmm. left. Beautiful Gotham City Sirens homage. And I'm going to pick Inferno, which you didn't like at all. No. What's and your number one? Echo Lands, number there three. So uh, we already talked about these a little bit. I really liked Inferno. Hickman's wrap-up to the story is great. Lots of surprise moments, very mystique heavy issue, but I'm, you know, Xavier and Magneto are not the good guys. They are <laughs> making lots of sacrifice. They've made lots of sacrifices and lots of secrets and, and some betrayals to try to create this Krakoan utopia and it could all be crumbling down. I really love the storytelling in this. Hickman proves once again, why he's just a master. Um, and then DC versus vampires. Once again, super fantastic. A good one-two punch from the heavy hitters. DC and Marvel delivering a really good, solid two issues this week. Um, lots of great covers for Inverno. Feel free to pick up the one that you like. Uh, I'm just a parcel to Magneto, so I grabbed this one. I had the White Queen, Joe Jesco. Oh, yeah, that's that's probably mm -hmm. better. Um, but, yeah, it's a uh, really good vampire story. Um, it's a lot this, of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of oh, shit moments in there. A couple, yes. two really big oh shit moments in there actually, um, which is very cool. So, mm -hmm. Inferno and DC versus Vampires, solid one two punch this week. And I cheated by making <laughs> them both my number one. All right, talk about Echo Lands. Uh, JH Williams has once again illustrated the best comic of the week. I mean, every, oh, yeah, yeah. every week it is bar none the best illustrated. Yeah, nothing holds a candle to this when it comes out. No. Uh, our, so, our survivors are on the run seeking safe passage. But does it go all go according to plan? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't, you have to read it for yourself. 
more not. But please, even if even if <laughs> even if you don't read it, even if you don't read it, buy it just for the art alone. It is amazing. It is worth every flipping cent. Yeah, do what Drew said. Yeah, and it, it, I know there will be a collected edition at some point. I am buying every variant of this. And if there's a signed so, variant, I'm going to get it. So even though this was like my number three, if you yeah. only had, if you can only buy one comic. This week, you should get Echo Lands. Yes. Like, you should skip Vampires and mm -hmm. Inferno and get Echo Lands. It's that unique and that good. Yes, it is. Absolutely. If you can only find issue one of Echo Lands, mm -hmm. buy it. Which probably would technically make it my number one pick, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. If so, facto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. So, anything else you want to add about that? You agree? No, Are we I, good? I, we I, I don't want to spoil anything else. It is a wild ride. You're yeah, love it's it. really good. Yeah. Okay, so that's our top 10, guys. Thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, I think Drew and Kyle have a pretty cool video plan for Saturday. Yeah, so stand by. Yeah. Don't forget, if you want to win all these picks that we had right here, you're getting both mine and Drew's picks, including yeah. the store variant. Um, you're going to get all these. You just have to comment your like the video first, comment your like number, and then reply in the comments what your like number is. Say something else in there. Let us know. Hey, Sean's the best. Drew's the best. You both suck. Whatever. That's cool. We ain't mad at you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We enjoy doing these videos. Uh, our next convention, by the way, is going to be Emerald City and C2E2. A lot of guys ask us what we're doing next. Emerald City, C2E2. Um, we just launched a very awesome exclusive cover for Knighted. I'll be reviewing that later in the week. Uh, Knighted is coming out. It's a Mark Texera cover. It's fantastic. Uh, Dark Knight homage. And we have a Star Wars exclusive uh, this Friday coming out. So stand by for that. It's going to be awesome. So you guys know what to do. We're going to wrap this up. Buy what you like. Uh, collect what you want. Don't listen to the haters. And we'll see you next time.